All right, welcome to today's episode of Constructive Conversations, a podcast where we explore the mindset and actionable approach that empowers entrepreneurs to achieve success in all areas of life and inspire others with the confidence to chase their own big dreams. The reason I do this podcast is because 10 years ago, I wanted to start a business, but I had no idea where to start and no role models to follow. So the goal is to provide inspiration for new entrepreneurs and provide fuel for those who are already doing it. Our guest today is Michelle Murphy, the talented principal designer and owner of Michelle Murphy Interior Design in Calgary. With over a decade of experience, Michelle has built a reputation for creating beautiful functional spaces tailored to her client's needs. MMID offers a range of services from full service interior design to e-design, making it accessible to clients locally and across North America. Michelle's favorite design style is mid-century modern, which she seamlessly integrates into her projects. When she's not designing, Michelle enjoys spending time with her husband and pets, reading or watching a funny show. So join us for this episode where we explore the world of interior design with Michelle Murphy, learn more about her journey. So thanks. Thanks for coming on the show. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Yeah. It's great to have you. Yeah. So can you talk a little more about your company, what you do, how how long you've been around? Yeah, absolutely. So I've been in the design world for 11, 12 years now. I've had my own business for just about six, coming up on six years here this fall. And yeah, I absolutely love it. I got into this world in high school, started uh, diving into what interior design was. And yeah, it was the right fit for me. And I haven't looked back. That's great. So you found your fit early on, it sounds like. You, you knew what you wanted to do and you went, you went for that. So before starting your business, what, what did that involve? Like schooling or training? Yeah. Um, so yeah, in high school, I had the opportunity. My last six, six weeks of high school, I got to do an internship and I was able to be in a design firm, which was pretty cool to get, you know, Mm -hmm. the insider info on how it all works. And I loved it. And I'd already decided I was going to go for a bachelor's in interior design. And Mm -hmm. so I stuck with that and absolutely loved it. And then dove right in as soon as I graduated. So that's great. And then at what point did you say, I want to start my own business. Was that was that a goal from the beginning, or did that yeah. develop as you were it's in the industry? Kind of something I'd always thought about. I worked for a lot of smaller companies mm-hmm. when I was starting out, designers that were either one or two people, and I really liked that small feel. I liked that they were able to be involved in all aspects. So it was kind of something I always envisioned for myself, but I didn't know exactly when that would be. Right? I wanted mm-hmm. to gain some experience first. So it kind of happened around 2018. I was like, well, I'm just going to try this on the side. I'm working full time, but why not give it a go? See how it fits for me. So I just started with some friends and family, just seeing what I liked, what I didn't like about, you know, the business side of things. And then, yeah, with COVID, I worked really hard in corporate world and kind of gave me the final push to be like, well, you know, I think I'm ready to put all this time and effort into my own thing. So Mm -hmm. yeah, I left my job in 2022 and went full time and haven't looked back. That's great. Yeah. 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 Awesome. Well, yeah. Good for you for, for making that leap. And which leads me to what's, what's your favorite part about what you get to do? What, What do you get excited about? I mean, my number one is helping people. Like Mm -hmm. that's always been a goal of mine, no matter what, I wanted to end up doing. I just love helping people. So being able to not only help clients sort of figure out what their vision is, right? A lot of people know what they like and don't like, but they don't know how to put it all together, right? Mm -hmm. Or they can't visualize how it's going to look in their space. You know, they see that photo on Pinterest and they love it, but they're like, I just don't know how this is going to look in my kitchen, right? So being able to help them go through that process and then give them that transformation is so rewarding to me. So just Mm -hmm. being able to guide people because I'm lucky to have sort of that, you know, side of things figured out, like I can visualize a space Mm -hmm. when I go into it. I am happy to help other people get that, right? That's, that's sort of my my why right yeah yeah, yeah that's so, great so taking it from from a picture to reality right. and and somebody's you know vague idea yeah. and saying yeah we can actually make that exactly uh-huh. right and yeah a lot of people struggle with like how do they get there so i really like being you know that person to support them uh-huh. yeah that's great yeah. and then 
I've had some other interior designers on the show and they talk about you have you have a group that meets regularly. Can you yeah. talk about that? Absolutely. Yeah. So yeah, when I was thinking of leaving corporate, one of the things that I was hesitant about was not having coworkers anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, I'd been used to always working with others, working with a team. So I was a little bit nervous about that part. So I started connecting with some other designers in the industry, just, you know, that we're also running their own thing, just as a way to have people to, you know, reach out to when you needed some support, when you just want to, you know, complain about something that wasn't going right or a client that you had some issues with or something. And so we started just with a small group and started doing the product knowledge sessions together monthly. We'd, you know, find a few local vendors that we either weren't familiar with or hadn't visited in a while. So we wanted mm -hmm. to stay up to date on product. And yeah, it was me and a couple of girls and then it kept growing from there. And now there's about 30 of us in the group and yeah, we, we do everything from our product knowledge sessions to socials. We're doing retreat this fall. So just different things to stay connected and support each other in business. And then we, we all, we just have a Instagram chat always going. So if one needs something, we can always be like, Hey, we need some help with this. And it's nice to all be able to support one another. Yeah. That, that's great to have that. Yeah. That network and you might not necessarily you know, connect with people if, you know, in the course of day-to-day -day business. Yeah. So that's nice to to actually keep up and, and it's industry related. Have you seen that in other industries? Is that sort of like unique? I haven't seen it as much as I'd mm -hmm. like. I mean, I've certainly heard of other people that connect with, you know, like-minded individuals in their industry and things like that. I think another reason I really like it is because when I got into the industry, it was still very competitive you know, this is my design work. I don't want to share it. These are my resources. I don't want other people to know them. And I hated that side. Mm -hmm. You know, there's tons of business out there. I'd rather be supporting a fellow designer if something's not the right fit for me, or if I don't have the right answer, rather than keeping everything to myself, right? It doesn't help us as an industry to do that either, right? It's nice to be able to rely on each other rather than trying to do it solo. So I think that was another reason I really liked the group, you know, that collaboration over competition. And I, I mean, I've seen it growing in other industries as well, but it totally depends, right? Some industries are still very competitive, so I don't find that they're as collaborative. Yeah. So I really like that side of it as well. Yeah. Would you describe that then as like a scarcity mindset in, in some like sort of that yeah. maybe old outdated thinking where people are like, yeah, you got to keep keep my cards yeah, close and yeah. Know, yeah, I don't want anyone to know my secrets, right? I I would I would say so because mm -hmm. I think the ones that still struggle with it are people that have been in the industry longer because they're sort of set in that mindset, mm -hmm. right? So they have trouble getting out of that. Um they're used to it, right? That's yeah. what they've always always done and want to protect themselves in their business. So. Yeah. Yeah, I would say same in carpentry, like I'm I'm the same as you. I want to collaborate. I want to really? you know pass work off if i know somebody else can do a better job at it than me i'll let them handle it you know there'll be more work but that comes along so yeah that's good yeah that's good to have that have that perspective for sure mm -hmm. yeah. and what does your team look like now so right now it's me and i just brought on a part-time assistant so she has some design background so she's helping me with some design details some admin work and then i have a few virtual people as well ba i have a bookkeeper copywriter and so they're all supporting me more on the virtual side of things but yeah it's it's growing which is yeah that's great is that is that newer sort of the online you know yeah having the online help is that is that recent or yeah so every i think the first one i brought on was my bookkeeper mm -hmm. which hands down i think best business decision that made. <laughs> yeah. like, the best investment for sure yeah. yeah i brought her on about two years ago and yeah, it's just been really nice to have someone support me with, you know, my books being up to date and everything. Mm -hmm. um, it was something I was falling behind on for sure when I got busy. So that was really nice. The copywriter was next. She's actually a friend of mine that we were working together in corporate. Uh -huh. We left within a month of each other. And she oh, nice. built her copywriting thing and I was building my design thing. And yeah, so it was really nice when she was starting to grow that she could support me. All my blogs and my newsletters, so she does all my copies Jeez. for those. And then my VA was just within the last six months or so. 
and she does mostly social media for me doing all my content for that and scheduling my posts and everything uh so kind of a good little network of people to support yeah. me yeah it's awesome that's great yeah so can you walk through what does a typical day in the life or maybe a typical project look like sure. or in the life of an yeah. interior designer day is a hard one so maybe typical mm -hmm. project yeah. is easier yeah. every day is different yeah typical project i'd say i mean every project no matter sort of the size or or what the scope is i'll start with meeting the client seeing the space mm -hmm. walking through their goals uh, what they're hoping to use the space for what works what doesn't work in the space likes dislikes we kind of narrow down to okay, what are we trying to accomplish here? And what is the aesthetic, right? Mm -hmm. So sort of those two main pieces, the function and the look. So every project starts that way, whether it's commercial, residential, full renovation, just decorating. Then from there, we sort of work, work out that scope in more detail, right? So mm -hmm. are we looking at paint colors and selections? Are we looking at full drawing sets with layouts and permits and all the fun stuff mm -hmm. of renovations and try to dial that in so that we have a good clear outline of what we need to accomplish and that helps us figure out budget and timeline from mm -hmm. that scope of work right mm -hmm. then we'll usually start bringing in some contractors and trades to work with us come up with a design plan to go over it with them and get their budgets and their timelines incorporated into the project and then we get to work so whether mm -hmm. that's starting a renovation and you know doing demo and install and everything or if it's decorating and we have to do some sourcing and shopping and having a styling day things like that mm -hmm. yeah so kind of our planning working out the design details and then implementation is kind of the overall path we usually take yeah and so i'm hearing your you're pretty full scope so you're with the client you're not just oh here's the design have fun you're you're with them you're, you're while the job's getting done right till they have the finished product yeah absolutely that's mm -hmm. that's my preferred way just because i find that i can support the client better that way mm -hmm. right there's less questions or problems that might arise right when they don't have the support they need so i like being there start to finish to guide mm -hmm. them through that process yeah, yeah. and what's the uh, what's your split so are you typically working directly for a homeowner for commercial clients or with or will like an engineer, architect, yeah. contractor bring you in sometimes? I'd say I get quite a lot of business from contractors. They'll bring me in when a client is ready to start a project, but maybe needs some support with that design. Mm -hmm. A lot of contractors don't want to deal with, you know, picking out the right tile or, you know, finessing this little part of their kitchen to work better, right? They'd mm -hmm. rather just be told, hey, this is what we're doing get it done so they'll bring me in to sort of support the client through some of those little details so mm -hmm. that everything works out the way they want and then yeah like i'd say that's a good chunk of my business probably almost 50 percent mm -hmm. is contractors bringing me in on their jobs then the other 50 percent is sort of a mix of homeowners directly um, i do a little bit of commercial pretty small probably only one project a year commercially and then some consulting usually on the side as well. So mm -hmm. I usually do that for past clients. So if we've, you know, finished up a project in the past mm -hmm. and they just want to deal with, you know, a bedroom now or something that we can do some more consulting to work out those details and yeah, go from there. Uh -huh. And I saw on your website, you offer some di digital design work. So like, that can be remote sort of, sort of anywhere. Yeah. Which is interesting. I didn't know. It, it didn't occur to me, you know, designers yeah. can, they can design from anywhere really for sure uh -huh. yeah that's something i started offering when i kind of started my own business because i'm from the states originally mm -hmm. so i have a lot of friends and family there and once they knew i was getting more into my own thing some of them were interested in it but it wasn't yeah. really something favorable to be traveling down there to support them right it just didn't really mm -hmm. make sense so i started doing things virtually for them right just doing a video call and they'd send me some information and i work on it for them and send it back through email so i'd always offered it but unless it was someone that knew me i wasn't really pushing the service and then when COVID hit, e-design mm. became a lot more popular because yeah. a lot of people couldn't be around each other or be in spaces, to, you know, things like that, mm -hmm. right? So I was trying to accommodate that. And uh, so it grew a little bit more. I've helped a few more clients with some e-design services. And I'm trying to grow it some more now just to be able to support people wherever they are, right? So yeah, it's a great, great way to be able to help clients that have 
the time to be a little bit more involved because you do need a little more time to be able to provide me with the right information because I can't mm -hmm. go in and site measure, you know, I can't go shopping with you at the store. So it is a little bit different, but it still allows clients to be able to visualize and get a good design plan together, right? Which is awesome because that's that's my ultimate goal, right? Is to make that mm -hmm. design process easier. So. Yeah. And with clients like that, when, when they come to you and they say, yeah, we want your help, is, is that because they like your particular past work? Like, do you have a specific style that's typical? Yeah, I'd say typically a lot of clients will come to me for style or um, process. So they like, you know, either work that I've done in the past, which mid-century is my favorite style. I do try to bring that into a lot of my designs, but I have a very light, bright aesthetic, very neutral, clean, modern. That's sort of what a lot of my projects go towards. And I think a lot of people will come to me specifically for that look, right? Mm -hmm. If that's kind of what they're envisioning, then they know that I can help them with that scope, right? And then, yeah, the process sort of having that start to finish, a lot of clients will come to me for that, right? Mm -hmm. They know that they need the support they don't have the time they don't have the know-how to do that renovation process on their own right so they reach out to someone that can support them so yeah definitely that, that makes sense yeah. awesome and then the other question which going back to earlier were your, are your parents in the industry like did you have any sort of influences that got you that got you involved are they business really. entrepreneurs worked corporate and still do and my mom was a dental hygienist and still works in that world so definitely very different than interior uh -huh. design yeah. and my dad is in IT so again a very different world I didn't have interest in either of those areas so I knew that right away but, but yeah in high school I finally had my own room I had shared with my sister for my whole life and so when I finally got my own room I was excited to make it my own and my dad helped me paint and mm -hmm. you know do everything that I wanted and once I was done I asked my parents I said hey like is there a way I can help other people do this you know if they're wanting to change a room and they need some help with it mm -hmm. is there something I can do and so they told me to look into architecture interior design interior decorating so I just did some research to see what each area was about yeah. and I liked the middle ground of interior design you know architecture architecture is very technical um decorating is a little more on the decorative side mm -hmm. right yeah. so I liked the mix of the technical and the decorative with interior design yeah so that's kind of what pushed me in that direction and it happened to stick really well uh -huh. so I think it awesome. was yeah it was kind of a thing that I fell into but it was something that I really liked, so that's good. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. Pick it, picking your, choosing your own road. Totally, yeah. 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 You never know. Right. So. Nice. So next one, what, what's the biggest challenge that, that you face or, you know, interior designers just in your industry? Yeah. I think for me and probably for most designers that I know as well is there are a lot of moving parts. There's a lot that goes into a design. And I think a lot of people don't realize probably what that whole process looks like you know especially when hgtv makes it look oh, yeah. so easy you know overnight you can renovate your whole kitchen right and yeah so there's a lot of moving parts it takes a lot of time i think that it's not that people don't appreciate the amount of time and effort that some of it takes i think it's the know-how right like there's nothing out mm -hmm. there that if you haven't done a renovation you don't know what that process looks like right yeah so there's no expectations you know, really right? yeah or they have the hgtv exactly, expectation right? oh you can do this in a weekend yeah, it yeah. Quick and it costs yeah. like five thousand dollars and it's like mm -hmm. well so i think yeah that education component is mm -hmm. really important because i think that's one of the hardest parts is a lot of people just don't know what they don't know right if they've never mm -hmm. done it before they've never dealt with anything in this industry there's a lot that goes on right so i think yeah being mindful of the fact that we need to educate our clients and the people we work with so they understand what the process is like yeah and you mentioned you have blog and newsletter and yeah. and you're on social media so is that is that part of it educating the Absolutely, clients yeah my i do two blogs a month and i try to make them informative right mm -hmm. so whether it's something about you know like i do some that are specifically geared towards e-design e because a lot of people don't know what e-design is right so just trying yeah. to help them understand what that process looks like versus you know the true 
interior design process, right? And then I'll have things like, okay, what are the different design styles? Because a lot of people don't know, you know, what what is what, right? They'll hear someone talking about mid-century and they're like, I don't know, is that, is that just lots of wood, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, what does that mean, right? So uh -huh. I'll try to educate them a little bit on those things. And then, yeah, like some of the process, right? Like I have a few blogs that are just walking through the renovation process and how a mm -hmm. designer fits in, how a contractor fits in, various trades, right? So that they sort of understand all those components that they may not be used to. Right? Mm -hmm. So, Yeah, and tying that back to when you said, so there's all the moving parts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what sort of strategies do you have to, you know, yeah. to manage all the moving parts to, totally. to make that work? So, Sometimes it's, you know, go with the flow and mm -hmm. <laughs> hope it works. But mm -hmm. no, I, I do try to have sort of my steps in place, like my process in place so mm -hmm. that I know what step I'm at and what has to be done at that phase, right? So I have spreadsheets going all the time for every project, you know, showing where we're at, mm -hmm. what, what we're doing next. Um, and it kind of just keeps things on track a bit better. I also try to do client follow-up emails to keep them on track with where we're at in the process, right? So that they don't feel that they don't know what's going on either, as well as making sure just communication with everyone involved is really smooth, right? So contractors, trades, anyone that's working on the job, make sure that everyone is on the same page and that keeps things going a bit smoother and hopefully keeps those moving parts. Yeah. Absolutely. Good order. Yeah. Yeah. And I've, I've heard from a lot of customers and you know they'll just hire a contractor and the, mm. the contractor isn't necessarily great at communication yeah. so then that that's when they feel like they don't know what's going on and, and they're left out yeah. can you talk a bit about yeah what's the difference between someone who just hires a contractor and sure. they say yeah we want to do our kitchen versus if they they have an interior designer as well absolutely that's a great one i think the biggest difference between hiring just a contractor or bringing a designer into your team is that you know a contractor is there to do your job and support you how they can but they're very hands-on in terms of getting that project implemented the planning and design portion of the project is really where a designer can support you right mm -hmm. you know so working out all those details rather than just oh here's a cabinet color here's a countertop okay that's great but how do you use this space do we need to change the flow and function of this space do you have enough storage is your sink big enough for your daily use like all those little details um is where a designer can really support you right we sort mm -hmm. of walk through all those little details of a kitchen or any space to guide you through the process, making sure that it's a useful space, making sure it's beautiful as well, right? Obviously you're putting money into it, you want it to look nice and sort of being your advocate as well. Um, so being there to make sure that the contractor understands what you want, right? You know, the, the difference between a client and a contractor, again, is that education component, right? Because the contractor, Yep. understands all of those details of a renovation but a client doesn't so when they're communicating with each other i find that sometimes that's where things get messy is because mm -hmm. the client doesn't fully understand what the contractor is bringing to the table and the contractor doesn't realize the client doesn't understand so that's also another piece that i find designers can help with is we sort of act as that middle liaison between mm -hmm. the contractor and the client and try to make sure that the design they want the function they want is all coming through yeah and that's yeah so important right yeah. that, that gap in communication yeah. um because otherwise you right you hear the horror stories people yeah. my contractor left they yeah. just abandoned my job site or totally. right and things things go wrong so yeah that's definitely good to have that yeah to, right. to have that aspect yeah. uh-huh sure. yeah and so looking forward, what sort of what's what's coming up for you and, and your company and what are you looking forward to? Yeah, for sure. I'd say I already have a pretty busy fall. The project starts into October and November, which is awesome. Still trying for some more full service jobs. I really like that start to finish process mm -hmm. with clients. Kitchens are my favorites. I'm always open to more kitchen projects. But yeah, just trying to find some great clients that are ready to that really need that support, right? Are yeah. ready to dive into your renovation, trying to potentially grow the team a little bit more, whether that's, you know, adding some more hours to the design assistant or bringing mm -hmm. another assistant on, something like that. And yeah, kind of keeping a steady 
it's a new pace of work and uh, trying to grow e-design a little bit more as well. That's, that's the other component I'm hoping to dive into a little bit more and see what we can do. Uh huh. Yeah. Awesome. And then, uh, yeah, what, what does your year look like? Do you get, you know, is there, is there a busy season that's, that's typical? Sure. Yeah. So summer for sure is mm -hmm. a busy season. I'd say sort of May to early October is definitely my busiest time mm -hmm. of year. Everyone's usually hoping to get some renos done if they're away for the summer or before the kids go back to school, they kind of want to wrap things up. So I find that that's a very busy time for me. And then slowest is probably like late December to mid January, just because everyone's kind of getting back into the swing of things, but it starts picking up again really quick because people want to start planning for the spring, right? Yeah. I mean, we have yeah. a short, nice weather <laughs> here uh <-huh>. in Calgary, <laughs> yeah. so people try to plan accordingly, right? Like, mm -hmm. you know, just figuring out what renos they want to do, what projects they want to do. And yeah, so trying to balance around those schedules is, is good. Yeah. Awesome. And then, so when you're looking for those, you know, connecting with, looking to connect with those customers, you know, the kitchens and the, and the full scope projects, what does your marketing look like? Like, where do you, yeah. where do you find you connect with customers mostly? I think the biggest for me is word of mouth. So whether it's past clients or contractors I work with, that's a big one. And then direct clients is a mix, Google, Instagram, and networking. Those are my my go-tos and yeah it's a mix of of all of them but it's been great it's it's mm -hmm. nice to i think i try to get the word out about the support that i can give so that clients know if they're struggling with those yeah. aspects of starting a project that they know that i can yeah think so. oh yeah i know somebody who can exactly. who can help with this right? yeah so yeah i try to bring that up in all my marketing right is mm -hmm. this is how i can help and if this is what you're struggling with i can support you so, yeah. Awesome. That's yeah. great. Yeah. And then talking about a broader scope of the industry, what do you see as, you know, like trends, and, you know, maybe five, 10 years? Sure. Yeah. What's, what's that look like? Yeah, I'd say, I mean, I'm interested to see, I think more people, at least in Calgary are going to keep renovating. I've found even recently, the biggest thing has been with the real estate market is a lot of people are either staying in their home because they can't afford to move somewhere else so they're looking to renovate or they are buying something that isn't exactly what they want because mm -hmm. there's not a lot of choice mm -hmm. and then they want to renovate so i think that that will probably be a trend in the renovation design world for a bit here i think a lot of people are going to want to renovate to make their home their own seeing still seeing a bit of home office and people working from home mm -hmm. are being incorporated into a lot of design and i think that's here to stay as well definitely something in you know just with covid that hasn't gone back to being fully everyone back in the office right so i think that that's something that's here to stay and then in terms of maybe more like design styles and trends we're still getting like we're still leaning very warm warm colors mm -hmm. warmer woods things like that we're straying away a little bit from the you know very white light oaks and leaning more into maybe some of those mid-tones and some walnuts and things mm -hmm. like that have been really nice to see again so i think that will be around for a bit as well but you know five ten years from now i'm sure we'll be shifting back the other way because that that's, what we yeah, that's how it do. goes yeah the, the pendulum swings yeah, exactly so i can see that coming back again but yeah right now yeah definitely still seeing a lot of that warmth and comfort and people liking that cozier feel so mm -hmm. yeah and I, I definitely appreciate what you said about a lot of offices home offices I, i've been asked to about that a few times yeah. can you give just some, like some tips for if somebody's you know planning a home office or or you know they need to update a room like yeah what should they take into consideration for sure yeah i think the biggest thing i look at for home office is what do you need for work right mm -hmm. do you need a lot of workspace are you someone that has paperwork still and needs somewhere to have that are you mostly digital now and you just need somewhere for your laptop so I start with that just so that we can figure out sort of like a desk or workspace, right? Because that's sort of the biggest component. Hmm. 
And then I also try to look at, okay, is it somewhere you're going to be a lot? Like, do you work from home most of the time and only go into the office occasionally? Or is it the opposite, that you're in the office most of the time and just come home, you know, maybe for an afternoon or two a week, right? Because then we can look at ergonomics of it too, right? Do we want to yeah. have some monitors on adjustable arms so that, you know, you can set up your laptop and work here for an extended time without being in a bad posture or, you know, just not being comfortable. So I kind of ask some of those key questions to figure out how the client works and what they need from the space. Um, and then a couple aspects I like to bring in are if you have the opportunity for a space with a window, that's great. Mm -hmm. Natural light really is nice for productivity, for just feeling, you know, like a nice environment. And whether you can have the window or not, I also say to bring in plants. Uh -huh. And it's kind of yeah. that natural feel, feels more comforting. If they're real, obviously you're getting fresher air, which is awesome. If you don't have the opportunity for real, faux is still a great way to bring in some plants because you're still getting the textures and natural feel from them. So those are some of the elements I like to bring in. And then the last component is trying to help a little bit with organization. So trying to keep it more clutter free, somewhere you can focus and be productive, you know, try not to have the kids toys in there and things like that, mm -hmm. right? Try to make it your your office space somewhere that you can function. Yeah, like dedicated. Exactly. Yeah, so it's actually focused yeah, for one for purpose. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I'm consulting with a client right now and she needs a home office space and she also wants it to be somewhere that's just for her to relax. So we're also incorporating her yoga space mm -hmm. in there. So it's kind of like making it a nice Zen feel figuring out what she needed for the work side, but also sort of the relaxing side. So she'll have a nice armchair that she can read in and somewhere to just relax and unwind. So, huh. yeah. Yeah. Do you see that as a trend? Because that just made me think I went, I went to visit my mom and she took where I used to have my office at her house. And now it's her, now that's her yoga area. Is that, yeah. Do you see that as a, as a trend? I could see that coming up more because mm -hmm. I think the other aspect whether design related or not, as a lot of people are bringing a lot more of that into their life, mm -hmm. exercise, mental health, self care, like those aspects have mm -hmm. become a lot more prominent, right? For people to have. So I think that that could be something a lot of people might consider over the next few years um, even like home gyms right that became really big again during covid yeah and i've seen that still continue right like i haven't seen a lot of people be like oh i want to rip out my home gym right, oh, right? Oh, like exactly. now, now that they have it they love it and that's a part of part of their home yeah so yeah i definitely think that sort of self-care and wellness could definitely be something trending because i think a lot more people think about that now than they used to so yeah yeah, yeah definitely so where can people find you and people can find me on my website, which is just mmid.ca. I'm also on social media pretty much everywhere, Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, mm -hmm. just as Michelle Murphy Design across the board. That's my handle. So feel free to look me up and yeah, happy to chat if you have questions or want to dive into their own projects. Great. Well, thanks. I appreciate you. Appreciate you coming on the show. It's great. Yeah. Great chatting with you. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks.